Hey everyone, my name is Ben and you're listening to A Daily Dose of English. This is a short, simple podcast that you can listen to every day to avoid, to avoid, what? Why did I say that word? To improve your English. That was a weird word to come out, a slip of the tongue, um, if you will, uh, where you can improve your English. Uh, the transcripts for all episodes and more are on benslanguagelab.com. I'm glad you could make it today. In this episode, we're talking about election day, which is kind of crazy. So um, election day, for those of you who don't know, is the day where the where we vote on in the U.S. where we vote on the a lot of different um, public officials, um, especially the president, which is what is the the most follow the not necessarily the most important and um, probably not the most important race presidential race or uh, electoral race as we call it and it always happens on it's not always the same date i don't think it's a, it's the, it's always a a specific no is it wait hang on let me just double check this election day um us i think it's a a specific time of year not um a specific date but let me just double check that. Um, oh, I didn't want to look at the out. No, this is going to be. I don't know how to find this information. Um, it's always giving me twenty twenty. It's giving me twenty twenty four stuff. Um, but it says well, it's on. It's today. I know that's for, that's true. Um, well, the day I'm, I'm recording this uh, like a weekish before election day in the U.S. Okay, wait. Here it is. General elections that are the, oh, the, the Tuesday after the first Monday in November. Um, wow, what a weird choice. Uh, so the Tuesday next after the first Monday in November is election day. There we go. I figured it out. So I was right. It's not always the same date, right? It's not, it's not necessarily like the 5th of November, which it is this year. It, can, it changes between the 2nd and the 8th. And I guess that Tuesday thing is they don't the, the the first the Tuesday after the first Monday is they don't want it to be the first day of the month I guess for some reason if like if if Tuesday ends up being the the first but I don't know why that's a very strange thing why not just make it a specific day anyways um, an interesting thing about the U S is that it is not a federal holiday so a lot of countries give people the day off like as a federal holiday. Um, saying that nobody has to work this day, everybody votes. That's that that you should vote. Um, that does not happen in the U.S. You actually don't get the day off necessarily. Many employers do give the day off, although not all of them, not even close to all of them. It's 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 relatively normal um, to at least get like a couple of hours off to go vote or something like that. And there are some states that have it as a uh, a holiday, but a state holiday, not a federal holiday, which is the important thing there which is really weird. It, it just feels like that. It just should be a holiday, especially because it's always on a Tuesday, um, which is like a great day to go vote and whatnot. Um, and the the main idea is that you vote on that day. Votes are then counted, and then um, the, the race is decided on that day. Um, and that is not necessarily what happens nowadays uh, or in the, in the recent couple years or not years like uh, elections which are over the course of because every four years in the u.s we have we have um presidential elections every four years there are other elections for um local governments or, or other governments in the u.s so like your congressmen or whatever those can happen more often and whatnot but um election day is the is the important federal one uh for the the, the president um, and we talked about the Electoral College a couple of episodes ago, but that's also an, a very important piece of U.S. elections and is playing a huge role in this year's election because uh, what happens is this Electoral College basically means that individual people don't necessarily vote. States vote, and then as a whole, those states' votes get added to a, a total, which which actually matters for the presidential race. And so each state has a different number of votes depending on its population. And so, um, and then those votes then go to the, the winner. 
But the thing is, a lot of U.S. states always vote the same. So, for example, I'm from Oregon, and Oregon has voted for the for the Democratic Party basically every single year. It is essentially a guaranteed Democratic vote. Um, this is one of the big problems with the U.S. elections uh, always being between two parties, is that it is very it is pretty much impossible to get. 80% of the states to ever change their votes. Uh, they always go to one of the two parties, either the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. However, there is a small section of states, a handful of states, um, which are what we call swing states. It's because they do go between the two different parties um, and the, it's, it depends on the year. And so what happens is that a massive amount of time, energy, and money is spent on folk, on getting votes in those states because they're the, basically the ones that actually matter, which is uh, can be very frustrating to people from other states where it's like, okay, uh, you didn't really, does you don't, aren't, you aren't earning my vote necessarily, but you're getting it anyways, um, which is one of the, one of the there's, there's a lot of problems with the U.S. Uh, democracy system. It is not actually as um, democratic of a country as other democratic countries, which is um, not great. Definitely better than m many countries that aren't democratic, but claim to be. But there are still many problems that can be fixed. And we're probably going to be seeing those uh, on big display this year. So I I haven't, um, uh, well, I'm not in the future. So I haven't, I don't actually know how the election how is going. But what we've seen for the past basically since Trump started running is this new thing of like election denial and election deniers and people trying to undermine the the election process in the US and causing um, a very small amount of people causing problems. However, we've also seen this going back all the way to 2000 with the race between Al Gore and uh, George Bush. I think that's right. Um, where that was, uh, that was there was a it's it's guaranteed that there was fishy stuff happening and that Al Gore should not have just lost, but he did because there were uh, because if you get a lot of people in certain places in the government, there is not a ton that you can do, even if they're just committing fraud. And we are very likely to see similar things happen. There has been, throughout the last couple of years, there have been um, states trying to reduce voting ability and to add more difficulty into the voting process, already claiming that things are, are rigged and have problems. And it is almost ex exclusively coming from the Republican Party. And we also even see them engaging in outright like vote buying, which is the big thing that has, hap has started happening in the past like week or so when I'm recording this, where um, there are like lotteries and raffles and free money to people that sign a petition. Um, the petition is just saying that they support the constitution, which is, it's very clearly a, meant a way to buy more votes for a specific party that, because spe it's talking about a specific part of the constitution, the right to bear arms and the right to free speech. Um, and that is the thing that has been sort of the rallying cry for the Republican Party for the last well, long time, quite a while, actually, even though neither of those are really under true attack at all. It's a pr pretty much fabricated um, issue. But yeah, it's this whole thing. It's going to be very interesting to see. There is um, a lot of people are quite worried about this election, and I think it's with uh, good reason because Trump basically wants to never have elections again, right? He's he's actually said that. He said that you won't have to vote again. I'm like, after, I get, after I'm president, you won't have to vote again, which is not how democracy works. You have to vote every, we vote every four years on a, on a president and there's a, a limit to it. Um, and we see in other countries where that doesn't happen, where the president just changes the rules and like, I'm just president forever now. It's like, okay, that's not how a democratic system should work. And we're seeing lots of things like that, people being put in positions of power. There's a couple of states where there's like um, people have been put in charge of some elect of election things 
who have uh, no business being in charge of election things. People that that are saying that the elections are are improper, that they're wrong. There's so much like small suspicious stuff going on in in many, um, especially swing states or and whatnot that it is. Uh, very clear of like an, an attempt to undermine and have more power and delay results. And so I think that's probably what we're going to see is that there is a massive delay in the results that come in. Um, so it is very likely that today on this on election day that this episode comes out that there will not be a, a final number despite it being very clear or quite actually it might not be clear because a lot of the polls are very very close um together which is kind of worrying because yeah it, it's like there's there's a pretty good video um by a a lawyer sort of about why this election is so important it's on youtube by legal eagle um and it's a it's a good rundown and essentially saying that this there's not really a choice in this election on policy you can not necessarily like the policies of the democratic party of kamala harris and tim waltz however if you if if they don't win a, a an actual convicted felon will win with a bunch of other cronies that he wants to get into positions of power to create more power and more wealth for certain people like it is not really about policy at all this year, which is kind of messed up and kind of scary. And so it's it's a very important election in a lot of ways, just because it's not like, uh, oh, the person that has, a, has the worst policy is going to get uh, elected, or the person that I don't like is going to be elected. It's not really about that this year, which is not good, because you want elections to be about getting the best for the country, rather than having the option being, um, we keep existing as as a democratic country and uh, everything's going to be probably fine or somebody that is, really wants to change these things and wants to have more power and uh, put more people in and like get rid of important people and, and all sorts of things is not a good choice to have. Um, and so, yeah, that's what we're looking at. I am... I've already kind of given up on the U S ever making reasonable progress for what I consider to be good progress, but um, we'll have to see. And I am very hopeful that things don't go horribly wrong um, in the next decade or so in the U S because I'm still from there. I'm not going to, can't get away from it. My, my family lives there. My parents live there. Um, And so, yeah, we'll see what the hell happens. But anyways, that's everything that I have for today. I hope that you, I don't know, enjoyed this episode. And if you're in the future, um, I hope that things have gone well. Um, You probably don't care as much because it's, you probably aren't American or else you'd speak English natively, very likely. So um, anyways, let me know your thoughts if you're as a, as an, as a foreigner down in the, in the comments below, but that's everything for me today. I hope that you enjoyed and I will see you again tomorrow for a brand new episode because we're going to keep going regardless of the elections. I'll see you then. Have a good one. Bye.